guys, it is chick season. My local farm stores got their first shipment of chicks in this week. That means it is time to get prepared and I'm gonna show you how to make a really super simple chick brooder. Let's get into it. <laughs> the supplies needed for this super simple chick brooder are really minimal. All you need is this, 50 gallon tote or bigger if you can find one and it's lid of course. Then you need some gloves for safety, wire snips, I like these ones, zip ties, a sharp, I like my little mini box knife. I've also used an X-Acto knife, fine. Some tape or some other way to mark stuff. I thought this would be easier. A drill with a bit that is about as big as your zip ties will come in handy or you can do stuff by hand. And also a marking pen like a Sharpie. And finally, hardware cloth or chicken wire. I always have hardware cloth hanging around. I like to use uh, hardware cloth over chicken wire because my cat often, you all know Benji, he often will sit on top of the brooder and that supports him really well and he, he can't stick his little paws in the holes to bother the chicks. All right, so let me show you how I make my super awesome simple chick brooder. And now we are going to mark off where we're going to cut out of the lid. This is where the hardware cloth is going to go over. And I thought it would be easier than marking with a pen. In the past, I did, you know, directly in the center, but I decided that I'm going to do a little off center instead. And I can't remember exactly why, but <laughs> there was a reason. Maybe I'll think about think of it later. <laughs> so we're just going to go straight across and Make sure we have enough space where we'll be able to connect the hardware cloth to the actual lid. Okay, and then I'm going to go straight here and then pick maybe a little bit like this to make the opening just that wide. Now we have the space marked off where we will cut this out and we'll do that after I cut the hardware cloth down to size. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. This is when the gloves come in handy because I already touched the hardware cloth today and I already broke my fingernail and I'm not super pleased. I also cut my finger this morning when I was grabbing my supplies. So wear gloves with hardware cloth because it sucks if you don't. That's the wrong hand. <laughs> so it's probably gonna be pretty embarrassing to watch me try and deal with this hardware cloth. I really like these snips compared to just regular like wire cutters. I forget what they're called, but if I can find them or similar ones, I will link below for sure. I'm trying to make this, it's not gonna be easy. It's just not gonna be easy. I want to go a little over so that you have room to attach to the lid. And same over here. And I'm going to cut there. Okay. I was going to do this before I filmed, but I decided you might like to watch me struggle. So here we go. To know that you are not the only one who struggles with cutting hardware cloth. It sucks for everybody. I'm pretty sure anyway, unless there's something I don't know. This, these have really ha made my life a lot easier. <laughs> if I didn't have gloves on, I'd be bleeding right now. That's for sure. I don't know how I've made this easier on myself in the past. I don't remember. <sighs> I probably just complain about it. Oh, that was close. Probably just complain about it every time. Probably just <sighs> a pain in the butt every time. <laughs> now that we have that, <laughs> double check it's the right size. We're going to Cut it here now. Hi. If you guys have not known what it is to cut hardware cloth, are you even, like, do you have chickens? Do you have farm animals? <laughs> it's the worst. Oh, my hand hurts. Okay, almost done. I'm calling it. For the cutting portion, we will lower this back down. 
Now we're gonna cut on the inside. Let's hope this goes okay. <laughs> yes, I'm shaking. Yes, it's hard. I don't remember it being this hard. <laughs> I don't know what you could use to make this easier. I saw. <sighs> Once you get the momentum, it's not too bad. Bench, what are you doing? might have been nice maybe i think dan did this last time <laughs> oh, yeah. i'm sweating Mark the spots with a pen. So then I'll drill these holes. Okay, now we got the holes. Let's remove the tape. Garbage in there. going to attach the hardware cloth with zip ties to the lid. Mm -hmm. And we'll cut all these off at the end. Let's cut these off. Oh, let's see. Okay, great. Okay. Voila. And we have the lid done. If you had your stuff together <laughs> and weren't making a video, this would probably take all of 10 minutes to do. That's nice if you have like, I don't know, surprise chicks. Some people get surprise chicks. <laughs> and, and there's so many uses for this tote. I personally, I've used it for transporting birds or other small animals. I've used it for a broody chicken with her baby chicks and um, as a Hi. hospital for injured chickens or whatever. We transported Donnie the Drake in here and it, or in one of these and we use them all the time for all kinds of stuff uh, involving the animals. I like to have multiple of these ready to go. When I have chicks in one, I like to at least have a spare because I find it a lot easier to be able to just get the clean one ready, put the chicks in, and then I will clean the soiled one. And they're so easy to clean. If it gets really icky, you can spray it out with a hose or scrub it or whatever you want to do. I just find that these, they last forever. I've used them to brood ducks and geese and chicks and quail, <laughs> all the birds. I couldn't imagine using something else. Now this is going to be better for a smaller amount of chicks. I would say six to eight being the maximum amount of chicks that will do well in here once they get bigger. Like it's pretty cramped once they get to their six weeks of age when they're ready to go outside. If you're doing bantams, you can add a little bit more chicks and it will be fine. It's up to you. But I find that for say a small backyard flock or adding some chicks to your flock, this is a great way to go. Um, the other thing I want to add is if you are using a heat, a heat lamp, do make a stand for it and I like what I've made and what I've done is attach the heat lamp to a chain and then attach it to the, the top of the stand and what this allows me to do is move the heat lamp up and down to if it's closer to the brooder it's warmer and farther away you know uh, it gets cooler and cooler and I find that versatility really awesome um, the clamps on the heat lamps often fail and heat lamps in general are super dangerous um, there's other means of heating your chicks 
like um, the heat plates and there's some other special heat lamps that people say are more safer. I'll, I'll link some of those below just so you can check them out. I haven't used the heat, the heat plates. I haven't used them myself yet. I would like to try them, but I've heard good things. So far I've only used heat lamps, but I feel that making a stand for them helps it be a little bit more safer. I even attached a smoke detector onto the stand just in case. I think these are great. I have a bunch of them. <laughs> They're just so super duper simple and easy to clean. They're so reusable, it's ridiculous. If you're building a chicken coop this year, be sure to check out the link or video or whatever I posted something here. <laughs> It is about using a chicken poop deck in your coop to make cleaning so much easier. I super recommend it. So if you would like to learn more about chicken keeping and other homestead related stuff, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. What are you doing? Come on. Go on. Does it look like I'm in here? Cause that would be pretty great.